On the 15th of April 2020, CNN published the startling news that Kepler-1649c found a new, potentially habitable exoplanet similar in size and temperature to Earth. On this subject, Thomas Zerbuchen, Associate Administrator of NASA's Science Mission Directorate in Washington, commented, This intriguing distant world gives us more hope that a second Earth is among the stars and waiting to be found. This might have impressed us if the media weren't feeding us news of the new home even more frequently than Joe Biden falls up the stairs of Air Force One. Nevertheless, each time the CNN anchors can barely contain their excitement. If finding a new Earth-like planet not cool enough for you. NASA says there could be some others out there, Chad. Mm -hmm. NASA just announced the discovery of 500 new planets. They're all orbiting other stars, not our sun, but one of them shares some similarities with Earth. Well, for years, scientists have been searching the universe for a planet similar to ours, and guess what? They say they found it. Guess what? The media stirs hype around unconfirmed exoplanet research all the time. So if you've already packed your suitcases for moving to another planetary system, you're gonna have to unpack them. Exoplanets. How the media had us fooled. What a peculiar news auction. Different sources name a different number of our supposed future homes. The numbers fluctuate rather widely. 24, 4,000, give me more, 300 million, sold. May I ask the respected journalists to come up and settle the purchase? Okay, I fooled you too. These headlines are not even from different outlets. We're talking about the same news organization. In each new article, the New York Post juggles with dramatically different numbers. To be honest, what else could we expect from them? Apparently, Trump's bribe money for removing the story about the alleged sexual harassment case, the New York Post spent on purchasing a super powerful telescope with its help Journalists were able to see so many of their future space homes, but to use a pulled out of thin air figure of 300 million was something even the New York Times couldn't resist. 300 million. Maybe. It makes for about 0.9 planets for each resident of the United States. And every New Yorker has three and a half planets to choose from. Well, maybe. But we must give the journalists credit because amid this media circus, they managed to juggle the concepts of exoplanet, habitable zone, and new home. But how are they different? Forgive me, son, but the world doesn't revolve around just you. In the universe, there are many stars for the planets to revolve around. Much like Earth orbits inside the solar system, exoplanet, it's just a planet which is in a different system and it doesn't have to be a twin of Earth. But for some reason, our world lives by a different formula. Exoplanet plus journalist equals urgent colonization. Exoplanets have their own criteria. Their mass must be less than a star's mass, but more than one of an asteroid. Otherwise, its own gravity won't be enough so that the celestial body can become rounded in shape. One more condition. There should be space near the planet's orbit, free from other objects. For this reason, in 2006, Pluto was kicked out of the league of classical planets and sent to the dwarf category. It turns out that there are many similar bodies near Pluto's orbit, and Pluto just turned out to be the largest of the lot. Some of the most well-known exoplanets are POI-700d, Kepler-186f, and the notorious Kepler-1649c. The habitable zone is an obscure area in space. The characteristics of planets inside the area are relatively similar to those on Earth regarding merely the supposed presence of water in liquid form. For example, after the discovery of such an exoplanet as K218b, 
it was noted, its gas shell is so thick that it's too difficult to call this exoplanet a real Earth lookalike. But this message has been distorted in the press, with headlines like this, Water found on a potentially habitable planet. Another news outlet wrote, it's the most significant step made on the way to our ultimate goal, finding extraterrestrial life, proving that we are not alone. I'm sure if I were more persistent, I could even find an article like, A new water park planet found. We are taking off tomorrow. Get a pool float and hop in. A compilation of such ridiculous statements was made by an astronomer, Laura Kradberg. She was quite amused that in most news articles dedicated to the discovery of exoplanets, the reporters didn't even bother to interview any scientists outside the research teams who could have offered a critical point of view. So by the new home to replace Earth, the media mean, guess what? As you know by now, almost anything you can imagine. Just like the hype surrounding Kepler-1649c, another nugget of information from CNN in the form of Kepler breaking news was quickly passed around other news organizations. The director of the K2 Science Office, Jeff Coughlin, called it the most Earth-like planet, and journalists labeled it the most interesting one. Some went even farther. Kepler-1649c is even better than the Earth, because it's 1.06 times larger, and it gets about 75% of the light that Earth receives from the Sun. Its surface temperature is estimated at 234 Kelvin, which is close enough to the temperature of the Earth. This makes it possible for water to exist in liquid form, but as you remember, this is not the end of the list of cool Keplers. The previously mentioned Kepler 186F also takes part in the Earth Twins competition. Its advantage, regular seasons and a stable climate, similar to Earth's. And TOI 700D, a planet for everyone who ever got a birthday card wishing you a smooth sailing ahead. Winds blow away from the night side of the planet and converge at a point facing directly towards its star. That's what makes it a cloudless version of Earth. It's like ditching a girlfriend and finding a new one just like her, but with fewer meltdowns. In other words, the girlfriend is 2.0. This is the title the media loves to ascribe to newly found planets. How the media comes up with ridiculous names for exoplanets. In addition to Earth 2.0, the media are in the habit of presenting exoplanets as Earth's twins and even its cousins. When it comes to updating a game, 2.0 means that the content is the same, only better, and it has new features. But why are the exoplanets referred to this way? For example, is Kepler-1649c really so much better than Earth? No, it's actually worse. In fact, this highly acclaimed new home can really put you through hell. The comparison made is an apples-to-oranges one, simply because Kepler-1649s revolves around a red dwarf star, which is much smaller and cooler than our Sun. Besides, its radiation flare-ups would threaten any possibility for a viable life form to occur. So instead, Kepler-1749c really is more apt for the role of Earth's ugly cousin, or perhaps a menacing twin in the best traditions of horror films. Still, the strange nicknames are better than all those names for Keplers with sets of numbers and letters. Because I just mispronounced the planet's name three times in a row, and you haven't even noticed, have you? By the way, the renowned cloudless TOI 700D also won't suit us. It's too close to its star. This means that at night the temperature can be close to absolute zero, and in the daytime it will be very hot from radiation. As a result, water from its surface will simply evaporate. Too hot, 
too cold and with the lack of water, quite pointless. And what about Kepler-186F? Guess what? We don't know the mass nor the chemical composition of exoplanets because it's difficult to confirm what's going on there. The question arises, how, without knowing anything about the features of an exoplanet, can we allege that it's possible to live on one? First, one must figure out how astronomers hunt for exoplanets. Five years ago, everyone went crazy looking for Pokemon in the game Pokemon Go. This year, it was considered a real feat to get as many storyline outcomes as possible when completing quests in Cyberpunk 2077. And for the past 20 years, among the space science crowd, the challenge of finding as many exoplanets as possible was at the top of the to brag list. Here is Kepler-1649c. No, this is not the shot taken by the rover Perseverance, which showed humanity the surface of Mars. It's not a photo at all. It's a digital painting made by an artist who simply suggested how the surface of Kepler-1649c might look like. Watching the news, we're used to seeing rocket launches, rovers, or new images from satellites in space. But exploring exoplanets is another matter entirely. It isn't easy to measure an exoplanet's characteristics because they're too far away. But we can obtain their star's glow spectrum. Most often, scientists base this on the shift of a moving star. If you isolate it and measure it over a long enough time, you can get the star's rotation period. All in all, having estimated the mass of the star and knowing the period of rotation, you can calculate the planet's mass. About half of the known exoplanets were discovered in this way. And the drop in the luminosity of the star during the passage of the planet in front of its disk will make it possible to determine its radius. As you can see, often the scientists build upon eclipses data, rotations, and a great desire to find at least something they can hang on to. An interesting incident happened with another planet found outside our solar system. It's called Fomalhaut b, or so it was called. After much noise about its discovery, it turned out… Guess what? That instead of a planet, astronomers perhaps saw a large cloud of dust from two bodies of ice that had crashed into each other. The University of Arizona commented that which was heralded as one of the first exoplanets to ever be discovered likely never existed. In other words, you'd call it a facepalm of cosmic proportions. But people with poor eyesight, who at least once have confused a dog with a trash bin, will undoubtedly be able to understand astronomers with weak telescopes. This once again confirms that the results of hunting for exoplanets is very conditional and imprecise. So the media should be more careful about reporting on this kind of research before stirring up a sensational dust storm. So what's the best place to live? While the media and astrobiologists can't figure out which planet is the best to hang a home sweet home sign on. I decided to address your need for information security. Therefore, I carried out my personal investigation, took into account all the proposed planet's data, and selected the best option for you in the nomination for new home. This planet has decent enough characteristics. At least there was water spotted on it. The planet's atmosphere is dense enough to protect against ultraviolet radiation from the star it revolves around. It has complex terrain and tectonics, which leads to frequent tremors. And that's not all. Dangerous active volcanoes have been discovered on its surface. I can't tell you much about life on the planet, but we can assume that the inhabitants are unlikely to be friendly in such conditions. But in general, after all this fake news and so-called new space homes, this planet looks bearable. I think after this episode, you'll know how to accurately distinguish fake news from valid content 
that's really worth your attention. This planet is the most feasible option to go with. But unfortunately, they didn't include it in the catchy media headlines. To take a good look at it, Google right now, Terra Planet. After learning more about it, write in the comments, would you consider living there?